Uh, Professor Stein, you're going to talk to uh, the Oxford Internet Institute today and uh, about um, open access publishing. And I just wondered if you could sort of tell us what you, what the main message is. What it, what are you, what are the lessons you've learned in trying to do open journal publishing? Um, my main intent will be um, to extrapolate from the experience I have had. Um, being the editor-in-chief of um, e-language, which is the uh, publication portal of the Linguistic Society of America. Uh, we have, over the last seven years, developed open access publishing, true open access, policy, uh, access uh, publishing, as we call it, Gold Road, and which is now called actually Platinum Open Access. And we are, uh, after a seven-year period, after what I call was infancy, and we're now moving into puberty. And as we are getting ready to move this thing into sort of early adulthood or puberty, uh, we are looking back and uh, thinking what are our experiences and how are we going to change what we have done at this very point. So this is a pivotal point. And what I want to do is to relate some of my experience to you uh, and draw some lessons from that. And what else I will be trying is to contextualize what we have done in a larger context of the development of science and publishing. One of my main points will really be, will we be justified in the future to separate the processes of science and the processes of publication? I think we're going in the direction of hubs, which will really mean that uh, any notion of publication, any traditional notion of publication we have seen up to now, on which we have worked, on which we've built our academic careers, will, be, will have to be questioned. So th the final point of my talk will probably be something that may well be felt to be scandalous uh, in a context like in Oxford. So mm -hmm. I think publications as we've known them will probably go. Publishers as well? Publishers may well have to go unless they reconfigure what they are doing. Everything is going to change. For instance, evaluation, uh, evaluative uh, procedure like the research assessment exercise will have to be modified. The commercial publishers will have to redefine where they are uh, w and what they can ask money for. Uh, publishers, uh, the scientists can now do uh, everything by themselves. We can publish ourselves. Yes. You see, we do the evaluative process. Uh, we can self-publish. So exactly where is the space that's being left for the commercial publisher? Mm -hmm. There's something very heretical to say, probably, but that's the truth, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, the, a common response to that is that there are costs of, of doing quality publications or pro quality dissemination, editing, mm -hmm. you know, peer review. And if that's pushed all on the academics and all on research, won't that just raise the cost of research, generally? Uh, the point I will be making is uh, that I will tell you how we ran things with the LSA, how the cost was distributed. Mm -hmm. That it may well be a model of, of costing research in whatever will be publication. And the second point I would want to make is um, I think we should talk about cost at the very last end. We should first discuss what we really need from inside research and define what we want to see happening and then start talking. How can we finance it? Once you start fi uh, talking about finance first, that's a kill-all argument. Yeah. People don't even think any further then. Yeah. So, and maybe the third point is uh, the more important point. You know, you and I are, we are taxpayers. Really what's happening, the current situation is such that we are paying three times over. The, the, you and I as taxpayer, we pay salaries, the universities pay us salaries and to do our, our research. The, the universities, in other words, the, the taxpayers, they grant us uh, research facilities and then we produce research and in the third instance, the taxpayer uh, pays a third time and has us buy back what we have produced, mm -hmm. maybe that's an argument even the neoliberals may buy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe uh, just as a last question, I, I wonder, uh, do you, uh, having learned about the UK's approach and knowing your own 
view or vision about directions we should go. Do you think the UK is off track or on the right track? What is your sort of brief assessment of the UK's approach to open access? I have to admit that I, when I came here the day before yesterday, I had very little idea where the UK was standing in terms of knowledge of what UK is and of what UK was doing. I know there is the Finch report, mm -hmm. and I've looked at the Finch report, um, and I know there's a hell of a lot of discussion going on in this country at this point. You see, if the UK decide uh, they just want to have repositories, for instance, the Green Road, the so-called Green Road repositories, you can't do this on your own anymore. If the rest of the world goes gold or platinum, yeah. I mean, you're not alone. You're not in a cocoon anymore. I mean, here's a, just a political issue, and here's a global issue. I think I'm not in a position to give any advice to people in the UK who have very long traditions, certainly in this place and in the other place, mm -hmm. uh, in publishing. So, but that's kind of my first impression, that okay. the discussion has not gone as far as possibly, shall we say, in Germany and parts of the United States. Thank you very much, Professor Stein. I'm really looking forward for this evening's lecture. Thank you for inviting me. Bye.